All righty, that's got us going now. Okay, so you should be logged in to Zoom and from down here to the modules area. And we've been working ahead in terms of the access and the Excel and the access cases. And I've talked about that almost every class session. So uh, there shouldn't be any surprises as far as that goes. Um, we're down here on week 10 and we've got three, uh, the, the following things to do. XLS 11, which we've done that already. So you should have uploaded that, have it there. Then, uh, um, XLS uh, and then X, uh, then the exam part one and exa exam two part one, exam two part two. Now, at the end of every module, and I've gotten a couple of emails about this, I, and so I, I'll just go back over it again. At the end of it, at the end of every one of these modules, you're going to see the following: uh, a file that covers the point distribution in the course. Then you're going to have a file that shows the resources for quizzes and exams. Uh, and then resources for the Excel cases and resources for the access cases. And for the exam number two, uh, I've got that listed there and the various items and where you, where you will find them for exam two, part one, which is a, a simple, it's just an objective exam, objective exam, excuse me. Now, part two is the hands-on part and normally what will happen is it coincides with what we've been doing in terms of the workshops. So you ought to take a look at that. And now I've got instructions for you here. Okay. And I ask you to pull it here. Here's the, here are the instructions. And I basically said, okay, wherever I've used the word Moodle, we're talking about canvas because they kept changing the LMS on us. But here's what I want you to do, okay? I'm gonna give you um, uh, a, a set of um, a data for soft, soft drink sales and for the temperature at the start of a game, okay? And what I want you to do is to create a second table that places the data for each variable in rank order, okay? Then, after you've done that, I'm going to ask you to visually portray and identify the dependent and the independent variable using a graph or a chart and a label at figure one. We've done this. We've talked about the independent variable, the dependent variable. This should look suspiciously like one of the cases that we've done where we looked at linear regression, and I, and I will leave it at that. Now, uh, here in uh, the, the problem in, in exam two the, and, and in the part, exam two, part two, and this is part, exam two, part two, and there's the second problem. And I'm gonna ask you to assume that the data in this, you're gonna create this duly created table, table two, and you're gonna put them into a, into a Microsoft Excel work, work spreadsheet. And then I'm gonna ask you to write it in a, to uh, write a formula that would identify the sales volumes, given the different volumes as low volume, medium volume, and high volume. Now, we've worked with some tools. We did some conditional format. We did some conditional statements. We also looked with VLOOKUP, and that was one of the tools that we used to get that done. So this is the thing where when I look and I see, you know, like six of us here out of 30 some odd, and then I start to get the cry emails about I'm not sure what to do, and I, I can't be too sympathetic. So those of you, those of you who may not know people are not here or not online, uh, you know, tell them, hey, you know, if they're not coming or they're not watching these, and I'm, I'm starting to see a lot, too many people who are not checking in by noon and looking at these, they're just kind of shooting themselves in the foot because as we go through these cases, uh, every every time I give you a hands-on exam, there's going to be one of these, and and here is one of these. We had a case where we went through, and we and we I think this was in the uh, we looked through and we looked at and we used VLOOKUP uh, to identify people in a it was a collections it was that collections case accounts receivable, and we categorized them using the VLOOKUP. Or if you want, you can write a conditional state. It's uh, just a clear conditional statement. It doesn't matter to me. But we've covered those things. And so in this hands-on part, 
I give you an opportunity. And, and this is where sometimes, as I've said, my course looks like it's deceptively easy because you rock along, you're doing some exams, we do some workshops, and I'm assuming that when I ask questions, they have a question, and then I get, yeah, nothing, okay, no questions, and then we come to this. So it'll be interesting to see what I get. Those of you who are here, here today, I do appreciate it. Um, again, uh, we've covered these in, in cases. Uh, we've certainly covered, uh, you, you like using a VLOOKUP to, to categorize uh, data. We've, we've covered using conditional format, or conditional statements, excuse me. Um, we've done sorting, filtering, all kinds of things, custom sorts to organize data. We've, we've worked with graphs. Uh, with a chart and so I'm and I would say probably it's not a bad idea to go back and take a look at those that I that I, that I provided everybody in the workshops to say here upload this for credit so this is kind of where I find out you know who's who's kind of been working through the course and, and maybe who hasn't and that's not my responsibility it's all of, all of those who don't uh, you're paying for it it's your schooling it's your money, it's your time, it's your life. My job is to present the material. And, you know, I'm looking today and I'm seeing six of us, so it's me and five other people. I'm wondering where the other 25 people are, okay? I'd say this, I realize you may not like me. I don't really care because guess what? <laughs> Many times through your life, you're gonna work for people you don't like. And you just have to learn to go with that or you'll have customers that you don't like and or may not like you and so that's just something that you kind of have to work through a personality issue and, and that's just part of growing up and being ready to go out and do business because you're going to encounter a lot of different kinds of personalities of people out there so that work is all due on the 12th and we'll go back over here for a sec okay and i'll close up by module eight and we'll close up nine so we're, so we're at 10. So you have, again, you have an objective test, and I've got the resources down there for you, a file that covers those. And I'll just open it up. I think I've got it down on my desktop. So let me throw it down here. These are resources for quizzes and exams. Here it is. I'll just open that for you. Okay. And this is exam two, part one. And this is the objective exam. And this will show you, these are the resources that are there, okay, that cover these. And then I've got some files sections over at Canvas that deal with those. So I don't, I'm not sure what else to tell you there. That's again from the, from the exam, pardon me, exam two, part one, okay. Now, You know, I'm not sure what to tell you at that stage of the game, okay? And I have a lot of those buried in resources here. Now, let me close this off for just a second and before we work at the access cases. Um, I'll go back over here to the modules. Let's look and see what time the exams are due. Exam due, two, part one. Now, sometimes I have to make accommodations for folks, so you'll see some of these show up here. This is 12, April the 12th, which is Friday at 5 p.m., so it's due then. That's exam one, part, part, exam two, part one, excuse me. And then exam two, part two. And that's due on this instruction. So let me get take you to the upload bin. Okay. April 12th, which is Friday at 5 p.m. Okay. Anybody have a question I can try to help you with? Now you'll want to, when you get ready to do exam to part one, the objective exam, the object, objective test. Let's go back there for a second. Roll back here. 
Um, if you've got an hour, there are 25 items, and there's one attempt, okay? One attempt, 25 items, 60 minutes. Now, I scramble all of the questions and I scramble all of the answers. So, and you see one question at a time. So, uh, I will probably dash the hopes of a few people who, who, who will have one person take it as a sacrificial lamb. I know all the tricks of the trade. It was a student myself, still I am to a certain degree. So, um, you know, what do you got to do? Okay. And then I've got a, a time period where I'll show the correct answers. Okay. And that's 9 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. that on Friday night. And I do that for security reasons, so I don't have, uh, I don't have questions floating out there. So you'll get a score, but then the correct answers, I, they are only available for you from 9 p.m. to 11.59. And that's so I don't have people taking the correct answers and copying them and just distributing them. Unless you want to take the trouble on Friday night at 9 o'clock going fine. So, you know, you do it. Okay, fine. <laughs> I don't know what good will do you because yeah, you'll be you'll be through the course. Okay. So if I made everybody mad at me now, no, I'm trying. I'm doing my best. All righty. Now, trying to keep us on track here. As I said before, we're working ahead with these access database cases. And I provide you two cases. One is an old one where I worked through it and I can just kind of fly through it and I can show you some quick ways to get some things done. And then over in the textbook, in the POTSI textbook, and I'll show you, this is the one we're working with now for access, okay? The, uh, this is the one that has a file and it's associated with a given chapter and they literally walk you through step by step by step. What I found was this, when I, when I would use a text just like this and I'd do the step by step, I'd get a lot of frustrated people who'd say, you know, I, 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 because I'd get people who'd say, stop, 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 I don't get it, I don't get it. Well, this you have, if you wish, to, to look at it and work through that, the case that's associated with it, and it's gonna be chapter four today. And so you can go through step by step and they'll give you some good, they give you great screenshots, great directions on doing that case. So the same kinds of skill sets that we'll look at today in terms of access are the same kinds of skill sets that are gonna be over in that garden four. And I'll show you that one, okay? And here it is, this is access case number three. And here we're gonna, this is developing a bill of materials, creating queries and customized sorts. And this is from that, uh, the, the company it was a Braxis Office Furniture. And I've got that file over in the welcome module of Canvas. Now, the Garden 04, that case is in the chapter four files of the Lambert and Cox student files. Everybody with me so far? Okay. Now. I might talk some about that file, but I really believe the authors give you such detailed instructions and such good screenshots that it's there for you if you go, well, I kind of caught it, but I really didn't to go back because I'm essentially, you're gonna find if you look through that chapter that I essentially cover uh, the same stuff they essentially cover the same concepts and procedures, et cetera, that I cover in my case, it's just I go through it a little bit quicker and show you some, some shortcuts. Now, just to try to kind of put all of this into perspective as far as these access cases, you'll notice if you start at, at, at number one, okay, case one, we work on we worked a lot on table creation. And that's because a table is the heart of a database. Um, if you don't have tables that are well developed, then you've got junk. And tables are the thing where you store data that you're gonna harvest using queries, okay? So we talk a lot about tables and developing them and, and building into them what we call inferential, re refer 
Referential integrity, which means, for example, like I have an auto number for every record, so every record is unique. Then some integrity into the data, like making sure that for every column, we require it to be answered, that we don't have null data. Null data means we don't know, okay? So we talk a lot, so we looked at that, and that was Northampton abrasives. Uh, then we did some queries, and this is the case number two, the Hudson Palmer case. Okay, and we work through developing queries, running them, report design, and I'm going to tell you again, I, you know, reports and access are just they're junk. They're extremely difficult to work with, and, and I would I'd steer you away from them. When you go out to work, you'll be work. When you go out to work, you'll probably be working with a system. If you're at a bigger company, I know you will. Either SAS, SAP, or Oracle that will give you reports that will make your eyes pop out. Um, and very intuitive, very easily done, very easily e easy to work with and to create. Otherwise, um, if I was, if I were in your, if I were in your shoes or I was having to work with access, okay, as the database of choice wherever I'm at, I'm going to take the database or I'm gonna, I'm going to take Queries, queries that is results of, of uh, data sets that result from a query, et cetera. I'm gonna embed them into say a Word document, take a print screen and, and print screen and show the reader what's there and use them as a figure or a table or whatever, okay? For the simple reason that it's just gonna display better. The table functions, you can play with them and in, in access and they're just, they're very bulky. And the reason is, is the more variables you get or more columns you get in, or dimensions involved in a report, the more difficult it becomes to, to maintain any kind of, of uh, spatial order or any type of, uh, of acuity. And that's even if you flip the thing around and you put it into, and you, you go and, and you make it horizontal uh, oriented as opposed to a vertically ordered report you can do some columnar kinds of things, that type of stuff, but frankly, I, I think it, it just ends up looking like junk. So uh, you'll, wanna, you'll wanna look at maybe as they talk about reports there in, the po in, in that posty text, but I'm just not a fan of what Access does. But I do know this, when you look at the report function in Access, that you're gonna see the basic kinds of stuff that you'll be doing when you're working with a dashboard uh, or some kind of database reporting function wherever you're working, okay? So, you so are you telling me that what you're doing is you're kind of showing me uh, the, what a model of everything else looks like? Yes, and once you start to see that, then it makes, then it makes sense to you. And it's the same as, okay, all of you probably in here know how to drive, I doubt that you go back, if you buy it, you have, let's say one year you buy a Chevy and you drive it, and the next year you buy a Ford or three years later. You don't go back to school to learn how to drive a Ford <laughs> because the, the, a vehicle has certain functions, it operates, then the differenti differentiation between those two models or some marketing things, how they look, et cetera. Same story with databases, same story with spreadsheet applications, and then the same story with what we call these hybrid kinds of applications that are out there. Okay, so when we, as we look at this, always be thinking about that, you know, I'm kind of getting a picture uh, of what's, what I'm typically going to see in terms of the tools that are available and the, the output I get as far as, as queries. Then when you start to talk about, or, or data sets from queries, but then when you start to talk about things like reports, that's a whole different, whole different deal. So let's go over and find those. And the first, we're gonna start with that, uh, that bill of materials, and that's uh, the Abaxis office furniture, and that's over in the welcome module, okay? And let's go there for, for just a, a few minutes. We'll take a look at it. And so we'll go to the modules section. All right, and here's the welcome, and you're gonna see it, it's gonna to relate to access case uh, three. So we'll click open the welcome module. All right, and we'll scroll down here. 
Ta 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 ta. There's uh, we'll look for the ACCDB case three. And it's going to be over here. Here it is. This is ACCDB three access case number three done. Okay. So what you'll want to do is you're going to want to download it to your desktop. Okay. And throw it on the desktop, and then we'll start to talk about it. I'll take a look at it. I'm going to show mine in the folder. And go down here. Now, just to make sure that it's yours, the first thing I would do is I'd go in, and I'm going to rename it. I'm just going to like call it Harmon. And then I'm going to open that jewel up. All right. And when I go to enable the content, if I've renamed it, I should be in good shape and not have any problem. Okay. Now, let's talk about for a few minutes what we're looking at here. Over on the left is the shutter area. And that's going to be where we where we have what we would call the graphic user interface of the objects that are in that are with they're in this database. And we've got the following typical objects. We've got tables where we store stuff, queries, that's where we go extract data. Then we've got uh, the reports. Now there are going to be some other things like macros, projects, et cetera. We're not going to mess with that at all. Um, for the simple reason, it's just a little bit beyond what we want to be doing. And I don't know that you'll ever even have to do that. The other thing I want to make sure that we see is you look above and you're going to see a, a control, what we call a control strip or the, the panel. You're going to see this in any database you ever work with. It'll either be on the right side or it will be on the top, left side, pardon me, or on the top. It's going to be one of the two. And most of the time, it's going to have some areas like these tabs, like the file tab, okay, or the create, or external data, database tools, etc. And then you'll have a series of drop down menus. You might have, and, and, and it kind of is like a, a tree and a branching uh, a arrangement. And you'll see that, and so you'll see what your options are to do each one of those. Once you're, once you've, once you've seen this, then you're ready at a certain point to go to work. Now, there are some things here that you may or may not get when you go out to work that you'll see. One of them is going to be external data. It's going to depend on your company and their security policy and your report level on whether or not your company will let you import import data or export data. It's a pretty simple process. Uh, the other day we imported and exported some data and it's, it's just not that big of a deal, but it can become a security issue or it can become a proprietary data issue. Um, and let me explain what that term means. When you go to work for somebody, okay, they may make you sign a statement that says, you promise not to share any of this information with anybody else. There are some, com some companies that for some positions, they will simply tell you if you quit and you, and if you leave us, or if we fire you, you promise not to work in this industry for five years. You say, how can they do that? Well, they have, if they have proprietary data and proprietary software and things of that notion, to protect themselves, they'll put that type of clause in an employment contract or in an employee state, employee handbook that you sign. My brother and I worked for, uh, it was an executive at and for, for I don't know how long. When he left them, uh, he had, he, they reminded him of his agreement not to work for anybody else for five years. And he had just about every major phone company and tech company coming to talk to him. But he said, hey, I cannot do this. I've got, I've got to, uh, I've got to, I can't go to work because if I do, they'll sue me. 
so he he was retired and anyway and he was in good shape uh, the other is going to be these database tools you may or may not see these because they may or may not be necessary uh, meaning some of the work will be done for you okay now when we're in here and we're working with access at this level when Microsoft created this, they were, they were wanting to do two things. One, kind of provide a model for everybody out in industry who is chomping at them saying, show us what a database ought to look like, okay? Number two, uh, that was this is to kind of be an entry-level product. And what I think they envisioned, as far as I understand, was that small businesses, folks like that, would be using this product. And, you know, you can't. And you know, we looked at Northwind Traders. We took we took a look at that company and how they were and how they uh, and and the the Northwind Traders database. You can see it's designed for a sales company, and that is actually it's really a, a template that if somebody is in a, is essentially a selling firm, they can take that and adopt it. But you can certainly learn everything you need to know uh, by taking a look at Tradewinds and Northwind. Uh, North Tradewinds, and if for, all, for all intents and purposes, they show you kind of what we talk about when we, what we mean by a data warehouse concept, okay, and then a data mark concept, and that's kind of here. Let's look for a moment. If you take a look here, you're going to see this table called Abraxas, okay? This is a small but authentic um, data warehouse. Why? Well, it's got everything we need about this Abraxas company. And let's open it up and take a look at it. We'll see. You can have a data warehouse with one table. You can have it with a million tables. It just depends on the scale. Uh, data marts are, are they're databases that from where you, re, where you deposit extracted data around a specific product or a specific set of customers or maybe a specific geographic region. It's a, think of it like, you know, think of it like there's a Walmart superstore and then on your corner is the neighborhood Walmart. They have limited items. Uh, well, uh, Data Mart is, is designed to be that, okay? So you'll hear people use those terms. Now, again, I have a warehouse here. Here's the amazing thing about this. This table, unless I add to it or I alter it and take cases out of it, is gonna stay the same regardless of how many queries I run, okay? I can run a million queries and I can still use that and I won't, I won't change the data in that table. Because when I run a query and I get what we call a view or data set, where the query is what gets saved, not the data in the table. That wasn't always the case before, and a great limitation was that the early databases, the table was a specific place in the computer's memory storage, and then if you ran a query, you took that data and you copied whatever you had gotten and it went into another part of the computer. Well, after a while, you know, you ran out of room. <laughs> and so when we came up with the idea of object oriented programming and that was let's have these visual things here that we can look at and will tell us what they're all about and let's use, let's use a structured query language, SQL, as a way to extract data, but keep the table intact, unless someone authorized can come in and change the table, add to it or subtract it or create new tables, okay? This is what makes databases such a powerful thing. And this is, other than people, the most valuable thing a company has is information. Information is data for decision making. It's data I can take and make a decision with. Otherwise, it's just it's sitting there and, I'm, and it's of really no value. But information is data I can use to make a decision with. I can, as long as I can store this until I change it, get rid of it, update it, et cetera, 
I've got that table there. And if I have a million of those, then I can leverage what we call the law of large numbers and combine tables and pull queries that, that from combined tables and basically, be in, uh, and basically be able to get all kinds of insights about customers, about transactions, maybe about what's going on in the external environment, et cetera. Okay. This is, and, the, and with all of the different types of objects, et cetera, that we get data from, um, it's almost just impossible to, uh, I can't even begin to tell you all the different, well, we have so many devices that we're streaming data from, We've got location data, product data, et cetera. I mean, when people talk about big data, you really have no idea. And it's all there waiting to give us insights about what's going on in our what's going on in the company or our industry. Okay, so I've got this, I've got this table here, Abraxas, and it's and it's basically I've got uh, some parts, and I've got the part code, the part name. And then they've got for each of for each of these models, I think they're desks and tables, uh, desks and tables that they they sell. You could see I've got Empire Classic, Moderna, Craftsman, and then I've got the units in stock. Okay, and then I've got the unit costs. Are you with me so far? Okay. Now, as I've said before use a database to store and extract data use a spreadsheet application to manipulate data typically that are going to be quantitative data linked to what we call dimensions the part code is a dimension or a characteristic or a variable same thing with part name and then each of these the units in stock and unit in cost are what we call fact columns. So what we really have here is a fact table. We know how many units we have in stock, okay? And each of these numbers here under each of these, like Empire Classic, et cetera, those, that's the, those are the number, that's the number of those components that that company needs to, to construct that product. And then we know the unit cost. So these are facts, okay? It's a fact table. And the, the bottom line is if, for example, you said, well, okay, I'd like to know, um, I've got these 600 units in stock and I've got the unit cost. Well, then how much have I got tied up in my inventory? Okay, now we can take access or any database and we can perform an operation where we get the total for uh, each row, then we get the total for each column, and it's, it's pretty cumbersome, but we can write the code to do that or go into a design view and do that. Or we can export a table into Excel where I can do that with drag and drop and get all kinds of stuff as well as some really beautiful visual visualizations of what's in this table, okay? So again, this is one of these situations where I've, I've got this, this kind of, it, it's the day, we've got data setting here, but we don't, it's not information, but that's okay because we can create some information. And we've talked about queries, so let's look at this query and it says task two. Well, before we do that, there's something missing from this table. Let's talk about that for a minute. Maybe a few things missing. And one of the things I wanna to emphasize to you is that, is that access allows you and me to go behind the scenes and see what the world, what the world is like for a database administrator. In other words, we, we can do anything with this database we wanna do. That won't be the case when you're out at work but it's good for us to understand things from their perspective so that when you communicate with, so that you can communicate with them effectively. And your ability to work with functional specialists is gonna really determine to a great extent, or, and to work in project environments will determine to a great extent how successful you will or you will not be when you go to work. 
Okay, now let's uh, let's click on this and let's see, we'll go back to the home page and you can either click on the tab or you can come up in the left and you see that's the design view and let's go down there. You see, this is kind of interesting, it's curious. I've got this design view and I've got this data sheet view. Yes, and you remember in Microsoft Excel, for example, you have the formula to toolbar and then you have the cell where you have the output. Same story here. We have a series of views where we go up and down like I, I'm, let's say, you know, you're driving your car and the red light comes on in the oil, okay? Well, the car says, eh, you're out, I'm out of oil. And then you smell something kind of like it's burning and your vehicle just freezes up. Well, you're out of oil. And then you have the, it's towed into the shop. Well, at that point, they're gonna flip the hood up and the service tech's gonna take a look in there and they're gonna run some diagnostics to see if you, if you crack the block because if you run a car without oil, you will, you, what you is, the oil essentially is between the cylinders and that's what creates the combustive effect so the car will operate. But if you run out of oil, it's just metal on metal. And then if you haven't damaged the rings or anything, then they'll put in some oil and away you go. But you gotta look under the hood and they're trying to do that. Well. We need to kind of have that same level of understanding when we're talking about a database. And, and so when you're interacting with a, with a D, DBA or uh, for your company, or maybe you're interacting with a vendor, you can do so on an intelligent basis. Here we've got our fields, okay? And we've got a part code and we've got part name, okay? And as you can see, this is a mess. Okay. Um, let's take a look at the part code. First of all, the part code, uh, it's not required, which means I can put a record in here without the part code. That's kind of stupid. <laughs> What's the name of the part? Eh, who cares? Well, if you allow a record to be saved like that, it's your, it's your, your, your ball of wax to play with. And same with the, the part name. So the first thing you wanted, would want to do would be make sure, and we covered this in the tables, was to make sure that we have, we require all of these, and we require them in a data format that works for us. Now look, if you don't, you're playing with fire. Plus, as I've mentioned before, you'd wanna make sure that you have this description so you know what that actually means. And to give you a good example of what I'm talking about, if you go out and you can go out on the internet and see it, um, if you use Oracle's retail, if you use Oracle's software application for retailers, they, it's about a 300 page guide and they tell you, here's how you will organize the database, here are the reports you'll run, et cetera, because they know the best way to do that. And so we look at this table and there's some work that needs to do. Um, one of the things we need to do is, is, is add a primary key. So we're gonna do that. So come right down here below unit costs and click under that, okay? And then put in the, and we're gonna, we're gonna put in this term, part ID. One word, cap, capital letters, okay? And then come over to the data type and we're going to make that an auto number. You say, why would I do that? Well, every time I add a new part, it goes ahead to the next number. You say, well, why would I do this? Well, this builds in what we call referential integrity, and I'll show you this in just a second, okay? We've got this auto number, and, let's, and then let's make it the primary key, okay? And you could do that, you see the little icon up there, and I just carry it down over there. And I can make that my primary key. The primary key means, says, this is the unique identifier for this record, just like you and I have DNA. No one has my DNA. 
No one has yours. We're all uniquely created. And now let's do this. You got the part ID. Let's move it up and we'll try to get that. It'll give us a little bit. There we go. I can move it up now. I'm going to put it ahead of the part name. Well, yeah, it's not cooperating with me. But I'm supposed to be able to, I should be able to click on this thing and move it up there and get it above the part name. But if I don't have it, eh, we're good. Let's, let's, Let's go ahead and look at the data view, and I'll save the table. And that's okay, we've got the part ID on the left, we can always switch around and mess with it, okay? Now, we've got the part IDs, and they're in sequential matter, we had 14, and we added, and then we added, uh, we added a, we have 15 parts. Now, if I get ready to add a 16th part, it will, it, if, if I go back in and do the work I should do to make sure that all these columns are required, that it has to be filled in, and the, or the record won't save, then I'm ready to go. Okay? So I have this part ID here. And so I've got, and once I would do that other work, which we talked about the other day, I would have a, a, a really functional table that I could use. Now, I may be operating in an environment where I have multiple tables of parts and I might, and, and this is a pretty simplistic table with, with components in it. And I might be working in it where I have many, many, many components and I link them all up with part IDs. So I wanna make sure that I've got that integrity there. Now, let's go ahead and close that off and we're good there. And then we're gonna come down to the queries. Now let's look at this thing called task two, and let's open it up and we get a data set, okay? This is what we call a result set or a view. And we'll go ahead and open this up, okay? Now, what I'm looking at is the name of the part, the unit cost, the number of units in stock, I have how much it's gonna cost for uh, the components for each, for, for these struts, okay, for each of these models, and then I have the value in inventory, okay? Let's go down to the design view and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And as you see, we get the unit cost, the units in stock, and then we begin to work with a series of, op of uh, operation statements. I'm gonna open this up for a minute. And we'll get this out of the way here, just a sec. Okay. We create a field called imp, standing for empire, cost, then the colon, and then we have the field empire in brackets, and we're gonna multiply it times the unit cost, and that's in brackets. That's gonna give us how much the component costs are for the empire, that model, okay? And you can see as we go through here, this just starts to be kind of tedious. You've got a lot of op, you do a lot of operating statements in here where, where you're, doing, you're doing a lot of math and all that kind of thing. Here's another. And if you want to do that, you're welcome to. Now, I would suggest, especially if you're, if you're dealing with a tremendous number of records, take that thing and throw it in Excel, or if you're lucky and you're working at a, 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 at a really smart company or a big one, you can take that and run, run the query and then do the work with it to get the numbers. Or if you're limited, I would take this and, and throw it in Excel, and depending upon how many cases I had and how many dimensions I was working with, 
if, if I didn't have that many dimensions, I would probably throw it into a pivot table just to see, to do a little exploratory analysis. Otherwise, I would just throw it in Excel and do the graphing uh, or whatever I needed to do to get that to work. So here in this task, and we'll just go back up here and take a look at it, we've got, we want to know the unit costs and how many units we've got in stock and we're getting some, and we're getting a value of our inventory. Now, if we want Excel, Access, pardon me, has, done, has been nice to us by allowing us to use the totals in the fields. So I'm going to click here for the unit cost, and I'm going to click total. And then, of course, as you recall, I can get the sum, the average, any of this stuff I want to get. Okay. Commercial, the databases, of the, truly commercial databases do this. Okay. They'll give me a drop down menu and I choose it, then it saves it. If you're doing a report for somebody, my, my, my recommendation would be would, if you're going to, if you have to go through and do all those operations and then go ahead and, and use that function, it's really meant more for, for being on the fly, but you can go ahead and get the totals for each of those. We'll get the sum, okay? And we can do that for every single one. The, the unit costs, and we get the number of units in stock. Then for the Empire, that model, uh, Moderna, I think that was called, Craftsman, I think is the other, and then the value and inventory. If I want, you can come over here to the value and inventory. And I'll know, well, how much have we got tied up in this? Well, okay. We'll get the sum, and there we are. Okay? So over the, over the years, as I've worked through these cases with folks, I've really come to the conclusion that while it's nice that you can come in here and you could develop these, these uh, statements, and I'll go back here for a minute, like this one or more complicated ones while that's nice it's kind of a waste of brain power when you have a spreadsheet tool like excel that'll do this for you in the blink of an eye and, and let you provide visual data a, a, a graphic picture of it and this is this is where Access is kind of a starter database is, is not so hot because it doesn't do charts and graphs well. But you can do those, they're pretty intuitive in Microsoft Excel. Okay. Um, now, let's open up task number three. Okay. And here we've got another situation where we've got the part codes and we've got the units in stock and the total parts. And I think this is some kind of an order that they had to fill, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, the number of parts required for the order to work. Yeah, okay. If you take a look, you're gonna see the part code. Then you'll see the part name and then you see this amp mod, these are models of this product. And so apparently they've ordered these two. And so we have to know, okay, well, how many three, three foot legs do we need for these tables or desks? And we see the total parts required for the order is 182. And you say, okay, do we, how many units have we got in stock? Well, that's great. And we can come in here if we want, and we can write another operation, and we can take uh, units needed, for example, and that would be uh, uh, total required, pardon me, it'd be units in stock minus total required. And it's a little bit of work when you could just take it and flop it over into Excel. And the nice thing is if you take this query and you throw it in Excel and you do your work, just the general work, just the mathematical work, you can pop it back into the database, okay? But in this, in this situation we're looking, we have, we have the total parts required for the order, 
and we've got the units in stock. So we'll go over here and we'll try to work with the sticky and we'll write an operation statement. We'll do that and this will be, I'm gonna call it parts needed. They needed, colon, and then I'm gonna put uh, in bracket, um, pardon me, in a, in, in a bracket, uh, total parts required for order. Pardon me. I want to do units in stock. And okay, I'll do that. And so I've got the units in stock, and that will be minus the uh, total parts required for the order. Make sure I spell them right. Okay, and so let's make sure we've got this parts needed with colon. Okay, uh, we have units in stock, and we've got that uh, the underscores that links it together. Then we've got total parts required for the order. So that should tell us what's needed. Now we're gonna we're gonna get some data and one of the problems we're going to run into here is the old, our old friend called absolute value. That's all right. We'll go ahead and, and I'm just going to copy that. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here to this empty bin. I'll paste it in and I'm going to take a look at the view. And there are the parts needed. And you'll notice here, you see the negative numbers. Okay. The negative numbers mean what? Well, it means I got to order parts. If I had a thousand of these, this isn't too hard to look at, but if I got a thousand of these, I'm going, man. So if I had it, it, what I would do, and we'll just do this anyway. Let's go ahead and just, and, and we'll just close this off. Okay. Uh, and, and we'll, Let's see, let's go ahead and just get rid of this for a sec, okay? And we'll close this off. So save it, yes. I'll close this one, other one off as well. I want me to make changes there. No, I don't want to do that. And I want to come back here to, and I'll pin that back. Now, I've got, I think we were working with task three just a minute ago. So, no, no, uh, required for, no, nope, didn't do that. Is it task two? It's task three. Maybe we, we must, we must not say that. Okay, required for the order. Let's see here for a second. Yikes, there we are. The parts needed. Okay. Now, I'm going to click on task three and I'm going to export it to Excel. Okay. And I'm going to put it on my dashboard, on my, on my desktop. And this is task three and I'll just throw it on the desktop and it's going to, and it's going to throw it into Excel and put it there. And I'll close this off for a sec. Okay. All what they wants me to tell where to put it and I'm going to put it in the desktop and save it, okay? And let's see if I did it. And uh, let's see, resources needed. Did it, did I throw it, did it throw it? Because I, and what I'm gonna, what we'll probably get here, or I should get, is a little white icon that looks like an Excel. And I'll see if I can find it here. And I thought I was able, I thought I would import it okay, maybe not. Okay, let me look for it here for just a sec. Is this gonna give me that 
squirrely looking little thing that we were working with. And maybe it, we had a problem there because it was open. Let's just close it then. And I'm gonna do task three and I'm gonna export. Let's do this again to Excel. And I'm gonna browse up here and I'm gonna find the desktop and it's called task three and I'm gonna save it. And then I'm okay. And let's go back down and see what we got going on. And if I can find, now if I can find it, which will be my luck, I won't today. There's some weird kind of thing. It should be, it should be task three. It should be a, look like a little, there it is. Pardon me. Now, I'm gonna open this jewel up. Okay. Now that I know I've got the parts needed, let's say imagine I had a thousand of these, okay? Well, it's gonna be pretty simple for me to use, say, conditional formatting, okay? And I'll just, I'll, I'll uh, this, this is, the, we don't have a number of cases, but I can use the conditional formatting to, uh, uh, to create a sales rule and I put anything um, less than zero. And this tells me what I have to order. Now, those of you here, those vethers, everybody see this, what we did. Yeah. Okay. Again, we don't have that many cases here, but if I had, you know, like I had hundreds of cases, or records, pardon me, thousands, uh, yeah, thousands is a little bit much, but that you can see, now I can really zero in on, well, how much I need to order. Well, it's telling me and it's alerting me to the fact that, yeah, I've got to order a bunch of this stuff and now I'm ready to go. So we've done that unit three. Um, let's go back here and we'll take a look at this task number four. Here's another one. And this was some kind of part code. Let me go down into the design view and I want to look at that and see what we're, why, what we were drawing. And this is the table, use the Abraxas table. And we got the part code, okay. And we used a criterion like C. Let's go back up to the uh, data sheet view. What we were doing there is we were looking for this is what appears to be what was going on. We were, we were looking for any part code that started with C. Apparently this company, when they use a part code, they would start the, they would use the company's name using an, uh, the first letter in the company's name and then the code of the part internally, okay? So thereafter, by, is something produced by whoever, I don't know who the vendor would be, and you can see we use a wild card. And you say, what are you, what are you talking about? Well, I'll show you. Let's go to the design view. And if you look here, you're going to see, okay, here's the table that we're working with. All right. And then here I get the uh, part code and the name of the part. And then I make sure these are clicked so they show up. And then I use a wild card. I put like, double quote, asterisk, C, end of double quotes. So we're saying anything, any part number, part code, excuse me, that starts with a C, that's what I want. Because as they've, as they've, built, as they've built things in, they've been wise in terms of making sure they have an ID for that company, their vendor, whoever that is. And so they use their first name is what it looks like to me. And so that when they do like C, they get all the, all the parts that those people produce. And that's just, we used, we used some Boolean logic there. It's just called like C. Now let's take, I want to show you one other level we've not been looking at hardly at all, if at all, and that's down at the SQL level. Structured query language is very simple. 
a few weeks and you're going, oh, okay. Then you could get some challenging things, but for all intents and purposes, it's, it's, it's not hard to learn or master at all. And in the data admin course, we, we do some things like taking tables and duplicating them and duplicating columns. And everybody, after a while, after about the fourth or fifth week as I'm going through a set of cases, everybody's usually about three lines ahead of me because it's, it's simply, it's pretty, it's a, it's a uh, specialized command and control language. And all it's saying there is, okay, we're going to select the table of Braxis uh, as uh, case three. And then the dot says, okay, what field are you going to get? And we're going we're to get the part code. We're going to get that, that field. And then we have a, Brax, a, a Braxis case three, and we're going to get the part name. Okay. And then the, the machine is so stupid, we're going to tell it again, hey, look, we're getting this, we are getting this from the Abraxas case three table. And then we have some conditional statements. Where, okay, the part code is like C. Okay. Uh, and that's the C with a wild card behind it, which means any part code that starts with C, we want that one. And then we order it by part code. And then you see the semicolon and you're done. You may have done some coding uh, of one type or the other now. I think SQL is a great introduction to it so you don't feel scared or intimidated by it, it really isn't. Um, and the same with VBA. I think we might have explored a little bit of Visual Basic for Excel. Might have taken a look at a couple of things when we were doing the macros, okay? That being said, you know, you're, you're a decision maker, so you're gonna be mainly interested in this and, and making sure you get it in a timely basis. Your boss will say, I want, I, I, let's say that we have a, a let's say you have a, a vendor called Collins. Give me the part, all the parts that Collins sells to us, because we heard they're maybe gonna go out of business, I'm kind of concerned. Okay, then we have task five. Let's open that one up. And here we have um, part codes and we have their unit costs. And this looks like, I wonder what we've got. This looks like this is some kind of special order. Maybe not. Let's go down to the design view and take a look. Because of the design view and the access or any, or any database to let you see the design is like the toolbar in Excel. And we have the part code and the part name and then we get the unit costs. Yeah, they wanted to know what are the most expensive parts. How, you say, how do you know that? Well, I can see because it says descending on the sort. So we'll go back up to the uh, data sheet view and we can see them in descending order. The reports, <laughs> I'm, I, uh, well, uh, here's the thing, okay, and you're gonna hear me whine and cry about the reporting function, the report function and access. When you go to work, you're not hired to be graphic designers. You're not hired to be report developers. You're hired to be decision makers. And the time you might waste on fiddling around with a report to make it look pretty, the report better be will really be important, okay? Really, really important. If it's not, you're maybe not spending the best amount of time you ought to. And that's all I will say. If you have a, if you have a, a truly commercial product, it'll give you beautiful reports, beautiful graphs and charts. SAS Visual Analytics is a fantastic product to use. And there is a site, it's called Teradata University Network. And if you want to register and go over there and look at SAS Visual Analytics, you can. The password is, is analytics. And TUN, Teradata University Network, 
is a is a website that was begun by a couple of folks over at Oklahoma State University that said we want to give students access to some of these products that are out here and keep everybody up to date on what's going on with with analytics and let you try and drive say SAS visual, visual analytics if you want to and it's a fantastic site they do have a certification and if you go through the steps to get their certification it's something to have on your resume really truly something nice to have i love it because they've got some fascinating stuff i'll just show you we're talking about databases so you know, let's let's move from something maybe a little less mundane there might be some kind of fun so i i'm, I'm going to go over to uh, tun i'll show what's over there and it's the Teradata University Network. And, okay. And, where's my, I forget my, okay. Oh. I think I, maybe that's it. No. Okay. Well, I, I've obviously forgot my password, but I don't want to take it. But you can go in and register, and I'll just, they'll give you, I'll show you some of the stuff that, well, I guess they took, yeah, welcome. That must have been slow. I want to show you something for a minute here uh, under analytics. They've got some fantastic stuff here uh, that uh, they can share with you. For example, sports analytics, what people are doing with those. Um, SQL Assistant, which is there are some companies that run a, a, a more robust version of access. Data, uh, case studies, et cetera, all kinds of things over here. And again, I think they have a certification you can go through, and it's, it's definitely worth having it on your resume if you want to take the time to go and do that. It's a fantastic product. I use it in the, uh, I use, I, I'm, we may use it in here, but I'm, I know that we use it in the, in the data admin course. And you can just see, these folks are, you know, kind of give us the lowdown on what's going on out there in the world. Plus, they give us access to these products and the ability to take a look at them, like like SAS Visual Analytics. Uh, and I'll show that real quickly here. And I'm not I'm not doing anything with DL4 today. If I get inspired, I'll do an extra one for both sections. But I'm not going to get all that hepped up about D4. It's pretty simplistic, and you have a whole chapter they walk you through that. Um, here's the SQL trial, here's SAS, okay? And that, this is, in my mind, the top product in the world, okay? And hopefully they'll load up for us here. Give the details. Now we're maybe a little slow here on the uptake today. It's waiting to do its thing. They also have uh, ERD Plus, all kinds of products of that type. Here we go. Now, let me say that SAS, SAS is not, only used, has, not only produces a fantastic product, SAS on an annual basis is rated as one of the best places in the world to work. <laughs> so it's not only do they great stuff, but they treat their employees and, and, and their vendors and everybody else very, very well. And the visual analytics tool, they have a guide to get you started. They have some contents that you can go through, some data dictionaries, the visual analytics. They have a guide. They have stuff for me as a professor. They have some white papers. This is, let me put it like this, SAS visual analytics is, a, is an Excel pivot table on as many steroids as you can inject in yourself. 
That's all I can say because it's just a fantastic show. So if you go over and play around with it a little bit, it would be worth your time to see that. And once you've gone through the data admin course, you can tell an employer, yeah, I've worked with this. And that really does get an employer's attention. Okay, we've got a few minutes to go and I've gone a little bit further than I want. I'm gonna close myself off out of here. Now I wanna go back for just a moment and, not, and to not forget that we're gonna be working, that I also have that file there for chapter four, and that's garden four. And let's see where that's gonna be at. Yep, it's in section one, I think. Yeah. They have the garden four course, uh, the, far, uh, the garden four file, excuse me. And it's from the chapter four files. Like I said, if I get inspired, I may go through it, but it's worth your while to take the textbook, whether you have it in digital or you have it in physical form, and go through and take a look at that, at that file and see what they do with it. Because this just, you're gonna talk about, you know, they talk about storing data in tables, filtering data, uh, here they're creating a form, we've done that. Running queries. Um, sorting the information. It using, uh, for example here, using filters in a table, you can do that. So there's a lot of high detail here that they give you and I would really recommend that you, that you do that just for the simple reason they'll walk you through step by step and you won't get lost too easily. Okay, folks, well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm going to call it a day. And if, if anybody didn't have any questions, I'm going to shut down now. Anybody have a question? No? Okay. Thank you much, folks. Have a good one.